Most of us have seen the arguably biggest holiday classic movie of all time. It's a Wonderful Life, a film that was structured to be a hit when it opened right before Christmas of 1946. Within a week, became the year's biggest flop. Yet, did you know that if it were not for the movie being so quite literally forgotten, it would likely never have become the classic holiday favorite it is today? I'm your host, Peter Zablocki, and this is History Shorts. Its release was only a year removed from one of the bloodiest conflicts in world history, the Second World War. Frank Capra's American Christmas supernatural drama film was meant to show the American people the appreciation for the present and the hope for a better future. It was a project of two pre-war Hollywood staples: actor Jimmy Stewart and director Frank Capra, both now scarred by their overseas experiences. The sadness and desperation one saw on Stewart's character George Bailey's face was authentic, as was Capra's dark direction. Of what otherwise was meant to be a light-hearted family film. Film follows George Bailey, a man who has given up on his personal dreams in order to help others in his community, and whose thoughts of suicide on Christmas Eve result in an intervention of his guardian angel. He, in turn, shows George all the lives he touched and what the world would be like if he did not exist. The movie was meant to be a post-war comeback for both Capra and Stewart, and included a publicity blitz that saw cover articles in all major magazines at the time. Yet its dark tone turned it into a box office disappointment. The American people wanted. A cheery Christmas movie, and not to be reminded of the dark, sad days nor death so close behind a war that claimed over 400,000 American lives. The recipe for a hit was all there. Jimmy Stewart was Hollywood's biggest draw before he was sent overseas to become a bomber pilot. A happy-go-lucky actor, Stewart's ability to portray honest middle-class American values led to two Oscar nominations and one win for Best Actor in the Philadelphia Story, right before his tour of duty in Europe. His counterpart, also a three-time Oscar-winning director before the war, Frank Capra, was specifically recruited to join the war effort by General George Marshall to create a series of war films. The short series, titled Why We Fight was meant to maintain morale and instill loyalty and discipline into the civilian army. He was soon sent behind front lines with his camera crew as part of the U.S. Army Signal Corps. After spending three years fighting the Nazis in Europe and the Japanese in the Pacific, the two men returned to a different Hollywood in late 1945. In an attempt to help his friend Jimmy Stewart, who was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and whose contract had run out with his previous movie studio, Frank Capra enlisted him for his new film. The pitch alone would not sell it. And if the two men had not been close friends and had worked together twice before, Stewart might have said no to the project. But he needed to get back out there and get past what he called his prevailing fear of everything that he brought back with him from the war. You play a fella in a small town, Capra explained to Jimmy. You get married, you have all these kids, and then your father dies, and you have to take over the building and loans. And finally, you're going to kill yourself, so you're going to jump off a bridge. And an angel by the name of Clarence comes in to help you, but he can't swim, so you go down and save the. He then trailed off and said, "This doesn't sound very good, does it?" Jimmy looked over at Capra and said. When do we start? The production began in 1946 with the cast and crew feeling like they were filming something special, and it wasn't just the characters and the story, but the feel and scale of the whole project. Even the fictional town of Bedford Falls was one of the biggest American film sets ever created, covering four acres and including 75 fake stores and buildings, a three-block main street, and 20 full-grown oak trees. By the time the film was complete, nearly all those involved were convinced that it would be a huge success. And although the film would be nominated for five Oscars, Including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor for Jimmy Stewart, the general American public did not feel the same way about it as did the critics. When the movie opened, it fell short of breaking even. It was the first full Christmas season after World War II, and moviegoers wanted, or rather demanded, cheery and optimistic titles. Once that It's a Wonderful Life. Just could not deliver. By the end of 1947, after a short run in the theaters, the movie was quietly placed on a shelf, where it would stay for three decades. It is hard to imagine that the beloved classic that ranks alongside Home Alone as the most streamed Christmas movie each year would have been all but forgotten if it were not for an oversight. At the time of its release, movies were protected by copyright law for a period of 28 years, upon which time the copyright holder needed to fill out paperwork to renew it. Republic Pictures, who owned the film's copyright, held. 
so much indifference towards the by then forgotten movie that they forgot to renew their rights in 1974. In fact, because of what followed with It's a Wonderful Life, the copyright law on movies was changed to at least 95 years, no matter how many people may have forgotten about the film. Back in 1974, American television channels were grateful for free content that had fallen into the public domain, with NBC picking up the forgotten holiday classic from 1946 and running it on prime time during the holiday season. Within two decades, it became the holiday season staple on television, much like the Charlie Brown Christmas cartoon. Rerun after rerun, It's a Wonderful Life has hardly been off TV ever since, and it's now considered one of the greatest, not just holiday movies, but films in general of all time. A movie that most of America grew up with, before cable, before the internet. A film that makes everyone get into the holiday spirit, remember the simpler times, and remind them that nobody is a failure if they have friends. Speaking of the film in 1984, Frank Capra proclaimed, The film has a life of its own now, and I can look at it like I had nothing to do with it. I'm like a parent whose kid grows up to be a president. I'm proud, but it's the kid who did the work. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to check out History Shorts on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to your shows. You can also visit HistoryShortsPodcast.com.